Thank you. Hello, everyone, uh, and thank you so much. My name is Simon Shin, and as the president of, president of NetMarble US, my primary role is to manage overseas NetMarble's long-term growth and business expansion in North America, Europe, and Latin America. Today, I wanted to talk about how our company think about the future of mobile games and discuss our approach to develop a wide variety of mobile game experience that entertain a global audience. First, a little more about our company. Netmarble has quickly grown to become one of the top mobile game companies in the world today. Last month, AppAnny reported that Netmarble was globally ranked number five in the world among mobile games publishers for consumer spending in 2018. Collectively, our games have generated over 1 billion downloads worldwide. And we have games such as Linux to Revolution that has grossed over $1 billion globally or less than a year. Originally, we started our business in PC gaming, PC online gaming, which was the predominant form of gaming in most of Asia. But in 2013, as we struggled to remain competitive in the PC game market, we completely shifted our business into mobile as we identified the platform as the best opportunity for growth. We realized back then that not many companies saw the mobile device as a serious contender to satisfy core gaming needs. And we set out our change, that perception. Uh, set, we set out to change that perception and to, to redefine what people thought about gaming on mobile devices. But the market situation has obviously changed dramatically since then. And as the mobile games market become more and more crowded with high quality game titles, it forced us to adjust our strategy and our approach to remain competitive in this rapidly growing industry. So how do we continue to grow our business in such a competitive industry? Today, I will discuss three principles that has helped guide our company to global expansion and how we are set up for future growth. First, we are strong believers in diversifying our games portfolio that caters to different segments of gamers with a wide range of taste. We have an internal development studio that cover a variety of mobile game genres, from action RPGs such as Marvel Feature Fight to fully featured open world MMORPGs like Lineage to Revolution or Blade and Soul Revolution, which has recently released in South Korea and maintains a top three ranking in the grossing chart on iOS and Google Play Store. To fighting style RPG games like Marvel Contest of Champions or King of Fighters All-Stars. To an interesting twist on casual board games with Everybody's Marvel, a five-year-old game that still maintains a top 10 ranking in South Korea. And even games like BTS World, which is an interactive cinematic storytelling game that involves the K-pop music group called BTS, a group that the media called the, bo the biggest boy band in the planet. To accomplish this, we've made a number of strategic investments to help further diversify the range of games we offer. We made a major investment in Jam City that publishes casual puzzle games like the popular Cookie Jam. Acquired Kabam, the studio responsible for the Marvel Contest Champions, and invested 
in the music studio, Big Hit Entertainment, that is responsible for BTS boy band group. And what this has really allowed us to do is to expand our business worldwide, outside of South Korea. Since diversifying our portfolio allowed us to cater to different regions with different gaming habits and behavior. The globalization of mobile games cannot be ignored. Reasons outside of South Korea has become increasingly important to the future growth of our company. In 2013, revenues outside of our home country represented just 14% of our revenues. Compared to 2017, where well, it held at 54%. Just in the second half of, half of 2017, it is represented about 70% of our revenues. As many game companies already know, we recognized the importance of culturalization as gaming habits can be very different from reason to reason. Of course, it can be different game by game. But what generally resonates in Asia is very different from what gamers like in the West. So with some of our core games, such as Lean to Revolution, we completely changed the character growth system, made significant visual and UI changes, and game balance tweaks so that consumers experienced a different game in different regions, such as Korea, the US, or Japan. I will come back to this later when we discuss some of the lessons we learned from this process and some of the mistakes we made along the way. And lastly, we believe that our success also comes from taking risks and finding new ways to innovate. With games such as Lineage to Revolution, we thought that players would appreciate a fully featured open-world MMORPG experience on mobile. We offered game features that players were only used to seeing in PC or console, like open-world environment or massive-scale player versus player battles. Two years ago, we demonstrated that players can participate in massive 200 player real-time PvP battles with the launch of Lineage to Revolution. And now, with a game called Blade and Soul Revolution, we have made 500 versus 500 PvP battles possible, which is really amazing once you step back and realize this is all happening on a tiny mobile devices. With games like Blade and Soul Revolution, we are really pushing the boundaries of what's possible in terms of mobile graphics and technology, fully leveraging the Unreal Engine 4 to create these gorgeous visuals and beautiful environment. And with games such as the one we codenamed Project M Match the Gathering, we have taken a strong IP that is recognized around the world as one of the most popular trading card games and reimagined it as a competitive PvP strategy game. And lastly, as I'm sure everyone is aware, AI technology and adaptive machine learning are already playing a major role in how we approach game development. We have game developers playing with level designs that tailors the difficult curve in real time after assessing a player's ability to really customize and personalize the overall gameplay experience, which we hope will significantly reduce churn out rates by providing more entertainment value. Now let's come back to the idea of culturalization. Even though we strongly believe in culturalization, in creating separate game builds to account for the different cultures in different regions for some of our game titles, this does not always work out as a plan. For example, let's talk specifically about Lineage to Revolution. 
why we launched this game in the U.S. back in 2017 to great fanfare, reaching the top of the download chart and the top 15 grossing chart shortly after release, there were some key learnings that surprised us. First was game progression. Even after studying player behavior through extensive game testing sessions and conducting tons of research, we estimated that for US players that we categorized internally as a potential active players would play Linux Revolution for an average of one point hour to two hours per day at most. This number is still higher than the typical average playtime session that we calculated for most mobile RPG games in the US, but much lower than the average time spent by gamers in Korea. So based on this information, we made a lot of tweaks and adjustments to the amount of experience players needed to level up their character, armor, in-game items, and overall game progress. But when the game released here in the stage, we observed that after months later, these active players were actually playing the game on average of over four hours a day, more than double the amount we estimated. So players were getting through the content way too quickly, which affected our content roadmap and release schedule and ultimately our bottom line. Another feature of the instant revolution was the item enhancement system, which is the primary method in which players can upgrade their weapons and armor to strengthen their characters and to be competitive in clans that aspired to reach the top of the leaderboards. We had a system in place where players had to forge items together in order to level up and enhance their items. But the higher the item level, the higher the chance of enhancement failure. After, a pass, after passing a certain level threshold, failing on enhancement also meant that the item they are trying to enhance would be downgraded to a lower level, essentially devaluing the item and making it weaker. In Korea, players understood that this was the risk you needed to take in order to become one of the strongest players in the game. We felt that this was acceptable practice there. But in the US, we realized this was a system we needed to completely change as it was the leading cause of a player turnout and one of the main reasons for ultimately quitting the game. So in essence, we dramatically altered what we thought Western gamers would care deeply about and did not make bigger changes to, the, to a feature that Western gamers do care deeply about. However, we believe we have a strong lineup of MMORPG titles that we are bringing to the Western market. And we think that these were important learnings that we will apply to our future game released to make the gameplay experience even better. This is something we could never do unless we took risk and made these types of mistakes. So in conclusion, Netmarble believes mobile gaming has a bright future and it is an exciting time for companies to explore ways in which we can expand the overall market. But as a player trend evolves and mobile hardware continues to be pushed, we must continue to think about ways to expand more on a global scale and entertain a broader spectrum of audience. We must continue to diversify our portfolio and cover a wide range of genres. We plan to continue working with big brands and IPs, figure out ways to create new genres and innovative ways to explore our worlds on mobile devices. We are making another game with BTS, but it certainly will not be the same game with we currently preparing to launch. 
We must also continue to properly culturalize our games for each reason and to think more deeply about how player behavior is different for each new territory we explore without completely ignoring what they do share in common. And we must continue to innovate to keep pushing out games and features that push mobile hardware to find new ways to leverage AI and provide more personalized experience for gamers and find more intuitive ways to present complex features in an acceptable mobile-only format. We still believe this is the best way to expand beyond the borders of South Korea and future-proof our mobile game business. Thank you all for your time.